We will be talking about Chris Mack and Louisville, a major, major bombshell dropping earlier today that things are going to be ending between the Cardinals and their head coach, Chris Mack, a university meeting scheduled for Wednesday. We'll get into that with a special guest as well with the local perspective, Nick Coffey from 790 KRD. And actually, we're going to lead right off with that here while we're waiting for overtime between Kentucky and Mississippi State. John Fanta here with you with Archie Miller and Steve Prohm. And, and guys, the news coming out earlier today that Chris Mack and University of Louisville are currently exploring the separation here of, of parting ways. And uh, there's a mutual agreement that the end, the end is in sight here. And we expect that to become official on Wednesday. Coach Prohm, I'll start with you just – uh, as as a coach, uh, what's your immediate reaction to this news and and what has occurred down at Louisville with Chris Mack? Well, it's hard, and obviously nothing's official yet. But you know, there's obviously a lot of um, you know speculation, and uh, that that's that's the direction this is headed. But number one, uh, you know, this is a tough business, and from that standpoint, he's got you know he's got a wife, he's got family, he's got children. Uh, he's got staff members, uh, support staff. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that get affected uh, when people get fired and people lose their jobs uh, from that standpoint. And so that part's tough. Um, you know, this, this, there's the highs are high and the lows are low. And, you know, Chris Mack's a great basketball coach. You know, we were talking off air. You look at his resume, what he's been able to do. Xavier, he won the 810 twice. He won the Big East once. He's been a number one seed at Xavier. Um, you know, if they don't have COVID that one year, he's probably a two seed, finishes second in a really good ACC a yeah. couple of years back. Um, but right now they're going through some tough times. And, you know, it's very, very unfortunate. I was able to go up there and watch them practice this fall. And Chris has always been very good to me, you know, over the years. I don't know him great, but I was able to get in there and watch those guys. But very unfortunate. And, um, you know, thinking of him and, and the people up there right now. It really is a quite the situation this is a school right now that does not have a president they do not have an athletic director the people that are in that role are in an interim capacity and arch it, it comes off based on what i've heard from sources that chris mack is ready as well he's ready to to depart louisville this this was a dream for chris mack when he first took the job his wife's from the louisville area the family's from the louisville area this was a dream for Chris Mack to take this job. When you look at this situation and the way that Louisville's NCAA violations of the past have hung over this job and what's occurred with this program, uh, how, how much of this is Louisville and the university, what's going on there versus Chris Mack? You know, John, Chris is a good friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. He worked, obviously, at Xavier uh, for Sean as an assistant. Um, he was at Wake with Skip Prosser when I was a player at NC State. He became the head coach at Xavier. So I've got a chance to really study, you know, Chris's teams over the course of time. And there's very few people in the business that, that I have more respect for in terms of how he runs a program and the type of coach that he is and, you know, what he's capable of as a coach. I mean, it's, it's undisputed. I mean, he's been a head coach, I believe, maybe 12 years. He's been to the tournament nine times. Um, he was a one seed at Xavier. He was 15 and three, I believe, in the ACC, going to be a two seed. And then COVID wipes out the entire NCAA tournament. And then if you look at last year for everybody, I don't know if anyone had a harder time last year with COVID pauses than Louisville did. They had a rotten, a rotten kind of delay. A couple of times that they were delayed for multiple times, they had to come out and you know, go right to on the road to Wisconsin or go right on the road to North Carolina and had really hard losses. And, you know, their season last year was really derailed by COVID. And, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, Louisville's situation, when he got there and inherited, there was going to be issues. I think they were all on the same page and it was probably a lot harder to deal with those things as the years sort of in the Springs go by because that cloud never left. So, uh, but Chris is an unbelievable coach. And if, if this is, in his heart, what he wants to do at the end of the day and what's best for his family, that's what's best for him to do because this is a hard business, as Steve said. Your families are involved. And at the end of the day, um, you know, if 
if you know the place turns, the fans turns, and things start to go in, in a tough in a tough way, and they're not willing to stand by you or help you or whatever it may be, you know the writing's sort of on the wall, and um, it's a shame because Chris is a great coach and he can do a lot of great things at Louisville. Um, probably needed a little bit more time here as this COVID thing hit and a few of the other things that are going on with their administration and whatnot. It's Sirius XM Channel 80 for the ESPNU station. John Fanta and the coaches Archie Miller, Steve Prohm with you on a wild night in college basketball in the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky is on the cusp of surviving past Mississippi State in overtime. How about Auburn getting taken to the limit by Missouri? The Tigers find a way to get out a road win, and Alabama goes down to Georgia. We'll get to that in a few moments but, guys, I, I do want to ask you about this to, to continue on with the big story of the day. And, and over these next 24 hours, you know, like I think you alluded to it a little bit. And, and I think it's really important to talk about because, Coach Prohm, you talked about the fact that someone in Chris Mack's position, he's got a family. There, there's, this, this is, there's a human element to this that goes way past what people are just seeing on their phones and their computers. And, and I, I want you, if you can, to, to give us a perspective of, you know, what, just what, what Chris is going through right now in all likelihood. Well, it's your dream. You put your heart and your soul into it. Um, I think I saw a, a clip of one of his press conferences from the other night just to talking about how much time he spends, you know, 24-7, just trying to figure out ways to get it better, get it back right. Um, but, but, you know, as young kids and, you know, young adults, you dream, you, you, you sacrifice, you put a lot of time in to get to this point. And, you know, when it doesn't work out or it's taken from you, um, it hurts. It's devastating. It makes you question a lot of things. But the one thing that you learn is, I think, as you grow and get older is just because you're not the right fit somewhere, it doesn't define you as a basketball coach. It doesn't define you you know, as a father, as a husband, uh, your walk defines you, your daily habits define you, how you handle yourself defines you, you know, and when you go through situations like this, you know, do you get bitter or do you get better? You know, how do you learn from these situations? And so, uh, but yeah, it's, I always said to my players and I always use this, man, you got to be humble through success, but you also have to be humble through failure, humble through success to know how to handle success but humble through failure to know, and it's not failing. Um, it's just a bad chapter. My wife, when I, when I got fired, my wife sent me a thing. It just uh, a little Bible verse, but it just talked about, you know, it's just an awful chapter. It's an amazing book. It's a hell of a story. You know, uh, it's just a bad chapter and, and he'll be a lot better from it. You know, once he gets through the storm. Arch, what well, are your sir. reflection? How, how hard is this? to be a coach who's going through this like Chris is? It's hard because, you know, I just think at the end of the day, one, um, you know, you don't realize that your family's affected a lot more than you are. And no it's question. great. You're in it every day. You know, you're, you're used to the heat. You're used to criticism. Uh, you're used to the wins and the losses. And, you know, I think your family, most importantly, you know, uh, they're along for the ride sometimes, but you take for granted, you know, what they're surrounded by every day, what they hear. And sometimes you have young kids and kids in school, you know, it just, there's a lot that goes into it. I think when the fin finality hits that you probably didn't even realize as much as you, you did as you were going through it as a coach, because you've got blinders on all the time, but, you know, you worry about your staff, you worry about your, you know, whatever else is going on. And as time goes by, um, you have a chance to reflect, you have a chance to, to learn the hard lessons that you need to learn, what you can get better at as a coach, if that's what you want to do. But I think at this point in time, the, the thing that you take more pride in as you move forward, though, is, is your family and the people around you who count. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. But anytime it doesn't go right, um, you as the head coach take blame. Whether you win a game, whether you lose a game, you lose a player, um, you know, you lose your job at the end of the day, everything sort of buck stops with you and uh, you eat that and it won't feel good for a long time, you know, and how long is sort of up to you, but make no mistake, Chris will look back on his time at Louisville and he'll see a lot of the great things that he did. 
Yeah. He'll remember some of the things he wishes he could change. And if he wants to coach in three months, I'm sure he'll have a job waiting on him to, to get back at it, to do it. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's a very, very, it's a very, very emotional ride. Um, this business. Yeah. And that's the one thing just to touch on what Archie said, just cause you get fired or just cause you move on doesn't mean you didn't have some great moments and great success and impact a lot of different people no along your path there. Uh, that's the one thing I think people forget just cause you're, you got fired. This, you, you're a failure. You didn't do a good enough job. Well, no, there was some great moments along the way. Uh, there was some, you know, in, a lot of people you impacted along the way. Uh, like we said, Chris would have been a two seat his second year, went to the NCAA tournament his first year. But the other thing Archie made a really good point is I got to call it, you know, that night you get fired, you're in the office, you're cleaning stuff out. And he's really just trying to get out of there. You're broken hearted. Your spirit's gone. And I got a call about one o'clock from one of my coaching buddies. And he said, man, the one thing I can tell you from being fired, man, check on your wife because it'll impact her more than, than it will you. you. You may not understand what I'm telling you right now, but it'll impact more. And you look at Chris Mack with his wife and I didn't, you know, being from Louisville and him being right there from Cincinnati, that probably will hit even a little bit harder for them. 